I am so stinking excited for two reasons. Not only am I working with the new paint inlay from Iron Orchid Design, which is a collaboration with Debbie Beard from Debbie's Design Diary, but even more exciting for me at least is check it out. So the images on the back of the packaging, packaging that will be shipped all over the world, I might add. Check it out. Whose work is that? And whose work is that? Oh, oh, those are mine. I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you how happy that makes me. So let's get started on the new paint and light. As always, I start by giving my thrifted project a good cleaning. I'm using Durtex, which is an ammonia-based spray cleaner. And then after I'm done wiping that away, I give it a clean water bath. So my whole original idea for this piece was to sandwich color in between two neutrals. So I started off using weathered wood from Debbie's Design Diary DIY paint. But here's the thing, I am a chronic overthinker. So while I'm showing you that this is what I did, I'm in the end, it's not what I should have done. What I should have done was just started right here. Skipped that whole part of weathered wood and just started right here with my color. So I'm using Mermaid Tail and Kissing Booth. And I like this whole patchwork effect. It looks terrible when you're in process, but it really does make a great effect when you're finished. So I basically just patchwork it together, alternating between the Kissing Booth and the Mermaid Tail. So I did go back and do two coats. So basically where I have my original patchwork colors, I just go back and I fill that in with a second coat of paint. Little pro tip for you is when I know I need to go back to my brush, I just wrap it up in some plastic and I could probably keep it for a couple days like that. The way a paint inlay works is that you actually inlay the paint that's on that carrier sheet into wet paint. So before I do that, I need to make sure that the placement of my inlay is where I want it. So I'm doing a dry fit. I measured the center of the table, then I decided where I wanted my inlay to be, and then I just used some painter's tape and my pencil to mark exactly where I need to inlay that paint into the wet paint once I paint it. I am using three different neutral colors, White Swan, Crinoline, and Sandy Blonde. These three colors work really, really well together. I have one brush for each color, and then I have a big blending brush that I'm gonna to use to blend these colors together. I get a good amount of paint on there, and then I spray it with my misting bottle with water, and then I use that really nice big brush, which is from Bella Renovare, Chris Donna, and I blend everything all together. Once I have the top finished, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the base. I'm doing the exact same thing on the base that I did on the top, using my three colors, my crinoline, my white swan, and my sandy blonde, and then using that big brush and some water to blend it all together. You can find all of the products that I'm working with in this video on my website. That's the paint and the paint inlay at junkeduphome.com. So for the base of the table, I only did one coat of these neutral colors, but on the top, I went ahead and did two coats because I need that second coat to be wet so I can inlay the paint inlay.
When using a paint inlay, your paint application doesn't have to be super thick. It just needs to be wet at the time that you put your inlay down into it. So I'm using the same exact technique that I used the first time around, using my three neutral colors, getting them all on there, using my big brush to blend it all out with some water, and then while the paint is still wet, that's when I'm gonna go ahead and put down that paint inlay. And you wanna go paint side down. So we're doing paint to paint. Once that inlay sheet is down into my wet paint, I need to activate the paint that is on that carrier sheet. So I take a damp cloth and I just blot the back and you can see the difference. Where it's nice and bright is where it's wet and where it's a little bit foggy, it's still dry. And you need to go ahead and blot that, blot that, blot that so that it all looks nice and bright. Then you have to let the carrier sheet dry and you'll know it's dry because it'll be kind of foggy looking again. Once it's dry, it's time to actually pull it off and you need to reactivate it by blotting it again or adding some water to make it nice and damp. When it's sticky, then you know it's not damp enough. It should pull right off nice and easy. I pulled off my little tape markers and then I had to fill in that little bit of area. So I just used a small brush and my three neutral colors to sort of blend that all out so you'll never see it. The inlays are designed to be imperfect and a little bit distressed. I went ahead and distressed mine just a little bit more with some sandpaper. And then I used my little hand vac to get up all of the dust because this leads to my next point, which is the pigment that's in the inlays needs to be fixed. So you need to use a fixative. This is really important. I like this varnish and I just give it a light spray and that fixes the pigment on my inlay before I move on. So remember earlier when I spelled out the plan, which was weathered wood, then my colors, and then my neutrals, and wet distress to bring all the colors through? Well, spoiler alert, it doesn't really go to plan because I wasn't able to distress enough to get that weathered wood to come through, which is why I said in the beginning that I would just have skipped it. A couple other distressing tools I like to use are a cabinet scraper, just kind of helps remove some of the high spots, and a sanding sponge or sandpaper just to smooth everything out and make sure it all feels good. So you could absolutely have stopped right here, sealed it up, and be good. But remember earlier when I said I am a chronic overthinker? Sometimes that overthinking actually pays off. So I really like to add depth and dimension and detail to a project. And this is one of the best ways that I can do that. I use a dry brush technique, which is having very little paint on the brush. And I use deeper colors to shade. You could also, if you didn't like to use colored waxes, like a dark wax or a black wax, this is a great alternative that gives you a very similar look. And here's a good tip I'm gonna give you. When you first hit your project with that dry brush, use a light hand and then as the paint starts coming off that brush, you can go in and scrub just a little bit harder. And since you're using essentially a dry brush, it really dries instantaneously and you can go ahead and seal it up without really having to wait for everything to dry. I'm gonna give my piece a good coat of clear wax. The reason that I'm able to use that clear wax directly onto that paint inlay is because I used that fixative earlier. If I hadn't used the fixative when I hit the inlay with clear wax, I'd be smearing that pigment all over the place. 
So if I were just using clear wax on this piece, which I could have done, I would let that wax set up for 24 hours and then buff it and be finished. I decided I wanted to dark wax the whole thing because I definitely wanted to see what that dark wax looked like on top of the paint inlay. So I let my wax, my clear wax, set up for a few hours, gave it just a light, light buffing, and then gave my piece an all over dark wax. After I let my dark wax set up overnight, it came back the next day and gave it a nice buffing. And boy, does it look good. I am really pleased with the way that this turned out. I know it's a lot. I know it's a lot of steps. I know my process is always super involved, but that's because this is really fun for me. This is what I really enjoy doing. And here's the thing. You don't have to do all of this, but if you watch the video and you learn just at least one new trick, then my job is done. I'm gonna leave you with some closing shots of the detail. So hopefully you can kind of get an idea of why I take all the steps that I do. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate all of your support. I hope you guys like the new paint inlay from Debbie Beard as much as I do. Don't forget, you can get it on my website as well as all of the DIY paint. See you next time. Bye.